hello students in the last video we have seen the general characteristics of the uh, division that division was nephrostomata and the superclass that was pieces okay or pieces so under the superclass pieces we are going to see the two classes first class is chondrichthys and another class is osteichthys so for understanding the two classes chondrichthys and osteichthys we will see the differences and whenever we complete the differences you will understand what actually type of characteristics is present in chondrichthys and in osteichthys separately okay first of all let us understand the meaning of chondrichthys and osteichthys right so if it is drichthys okay so this meaning okay this meaning means fish right and chondrichthys that means their body uh, the the bone the endoskeleton this is made up of cartilages okay so they are going to have cartilaginous fish and osteichthys is istix means this is fish right osteichthys means ostic means this organism they are the bony fishes their endoskeleton is made up of bones right now let us move to their characteristics first of all we will start from the uh, mouth right okay so first of all just see first point right so if you see in case of the fishes they are going to have a term uh, ventral mouth okay and terminal mouth in uh, chondrichthys and osteichthys separately okay so first of all just see if it comes to if it comes to the chondrichthys their mouth is present towards the uh, ventral side right so they are going to have the ventral mouth right and if you see in case of osteichthys then they are going to have the terminal mouth right so this is a very unique characteristics that presence of ventral mouth in the chondrichthys and presence of terminal mouth in case of osteichthys if it comes to the eye then both of them they are going to have the nictitating membrane nictitating membrane is present in both of the organisms just there is a difference that uh, uh, there is no difference that their upper eyelid and lower eyelid they are not present otherwise nictitating membrane is found in both discondrictus and osteichthys right so a very unique another characteristic see after that here in this regions we are going to have the gill slits right so if you see the gill slits right so what happen in case of chondrichthys the gill slits are present but this gill slits are naked okay so this gill slits are naked naked means you can see even the gill slits okay they have this gill slits through which the uh, gases that can be taken by the organism from the water that is dissolved oxygen yes in case of the osteichthys also the gills will be present and that gill slits that will be covered by a structure that is known as operculum right so this operculum is actually the covering which is present above the gills okay so operculum is present in case of the osteichthys and in chondrichthys this operculum is absent the naked gill slits will be present in the chondrichthys and in case of osteichthys operculum is present what uh, we can use the term can in uh, the osteichthys that can is present right so actually this is nothing but the upper uh, op, nothing but the uh, your actually this is just the covering that is operculum that covers the gills otherwise both of them they will have gills the gills will be naked in chondrichthys and it is covered by operculum in case of osteichthys right this is important now come to the next point that in case of their body covering okay so just see their body covering in case of the chondrichthys chondrichthys have a very much typical type of scale right and what is the type of scale present the type of scale is placoid scale 
okay so scale is placoid scale which is projecting posteriorly and one above the another this placoid scales are present right and because of that actually this placoid scale hurts it is going to have some thorn some spine like structure so that's why it is very uh, very much uh, uh, stinky in case of chondritis but if you see in case of osteictis there are three different type of scales present right what are the type of scales i can tell you here that is cycloid type of scale right next one glenoid type of scale okay cycloid glenoid and tenoid type of scales present right if it is cycloid then it will be like this right if it is glenoid like this okay and in case of tenoid also it will be like this tenoid scale is a little stinky like if you see the koi fish okay anabas in case of them you can if you suppose want to touch it then a little stinky it can be that have very small torn spine like structures will be present but if you see cycloid and glenoid they are not at all going to hurt you it is very much smooth right so the scale is placoid type in case of chondritis and in case of osteictis there are three different type of scales can be present either it can be cycloid or glenoid or tenoid right so this is the next difference if you see in case of the chondritis right then in case of the chondritis the fin the last caudal fin is heterocircle heterocircle means and here i can sh uh, show you that in case of osteictis the last caudal fin is homocircle now what is the meaning of homocircle and heterocircle if you see the symmetry then the caudal fin is asymmetrical in case of chondritis that is known as heterocircle and in case of osteictis both the two lobes of the caudal fin they are completely symmetrical right so that's why this organisms osteictis are going to have homocircle type of last caudal fin right now the next difference if you see this organisms chondritis they have a, another type of sensory organ above this region okay so in this region they have a very unique type of sensory organ present what is that sen sensory organ known as this is known as ampulla of lorenzini okay so in case of actually one fish that is known as dog fish or scoliodon that very typical ampulla of lorenzini is seen that actually above the eye in this region they have small small pores and inside the pore they will have a cup like structure that means a swollen structure is present where water can enter and whenever water enters this temperature of the water can be understood okay water temperature can be understood can be sensed by ampulla of lorenzini that is a specific characteristics of one of the chondritis that is dogfish or scoliodon dogfish or scoliodon why it is actually look like a dog it's not look like a dog what happened their mouth part have a snout like structure which resembles a snout structure and they have a very unique characteristic to sniff they have a very unique characteristics of sniffing character so that's why their uh, sniffing characteristics as it is resembling the uh, uh dogs okay so that's why what we can call that is known as dog fish right otherwise if you see in case of their ear right so this ear is not that typical if you see here also in this uh, head region we will not able to find any type of ear or um, entry is present or the tympanum will be seen the ear will not be provided but yes tympanum is present in both that is chondritis and osteictis Weber's ossicle type of connection is present in between tympanum and the inner ear that is labyrinth it is present 
but yes in case of both contractus and ostictus this sense for understanding the vibration is very poor that means they cannot hear to a little extent they cannot hear at all or their sensory uh, hearing capacity is very much poor or they cannot at all hear okay otherwise they will be provided with the tympanum they will be provided also with the internal ear or labyrinth and in between them a weber's ossicle a bone like a connection is there that is weber's ossicle that is present in both conductus and ostictus now the next characteristic c that in case of this conductus okay see this is suppose the liver okay around the liver they have a fat deposition okay a fat deposition occurs in case of the conductus and we use okay we use a very unique thing which is a high rich source of vitamins also what is that cod liver oil remember cod liver oil this is very much unique so liver is covered by a fat layer in case of the conductus but in case of ostictus what is present see i will draw a diagram if you can understand what is this you know what is this this structure this is known as the bladder air bladder okay all of us we have seen in our lifetime this is a balloon like structure is present in case of this fishes in case of the ostictus air bladder is present but in case of conductus air bladder is not present what is the main function of air bladder that air bladder helps basically to have air inside it and because of that it gives the organism a little buoyancy so that it can float in the water so in case of ostictus if they do not swim also if they constantly do not um, actually um, Um, use their fins then also they can a little extent they can be float on the water but in case of conductus air bladder is absent so they don't they are not provided with buoyancy they cannot uh, they cannot actually be static to water they will go to they will sink right and to devoid to actually to a little extent to um, uh, actually a type of adaptation to the air bladder as the conductus do not have the air bladder so that's why the liver is covered by a oil deposition so that Uh, this oil you know that na so specific gravity of uh, the oil is less than water so that's why the liver this is provided with a fatty layer so that it can give that organism to a little extent uh, buoyancy second thing that around their caudal fin there is a thick musculature so that they can constantly swim okay so they have to swim otherwise they are going to sink in case of conductus but in case of ostictus do this organism do, do not swim they can float they can float in the water without sinking okay why this is because of air bladder air bladder have two another functions also like sometime this vibration can be produced and they can produce sound some of the fishes can produce sound that also to certain extent give this organism when see on have another lots of functions all those things are not needed so air bladder is present in case of ostictus conductus will not have this air bladder so that's why to provide this organism buoyancy they have two adaptation what are they around the liver they have a fat deposition and around the caudal fin they are going to have a thick musculature now the next characteristic c in case of conductus around this pelvic fin this is the pelvic region where they have the fin they have a um, one uh, homologous structure actually to male copulatory organ penis they have clasper okay so in case of the males male conductus they have clasper so that this clasper holds the female organism and they can deposit the spermatozoa inside the female fish and that's why they will have internal fertilization 
okay so that they can they provide the male gamete to enter into the female body and inside the female body the male and the female gamete fuse so that is fertilization so fertilization is present in uh, fertilization is internal in case of the contractus because of the copulatory organ clasper in case of male chondrectus but if you see in case of osteitis clasper is not present so if they cannot hold the female fish and can deposit the male gamete into the female body what will happen to them they have to have external fertilization so fertilization is external in case of osteitis and in case of chondrectus they are going to have uh, uh, internal fertilization and also you can see in case of chondrectus sexual dimorphism is seen sexual dimorphism means by the presence of the clasper we can understand the male and female chondrectus but sexual dimorphism is absent in case of osteitis what happened to them in case of them they do not be distinct they are not uh, different from the male or female both male and female resembles each other right so as they are uh, not the showing themselves different sexual dimorphism is absent yes osteitis will have this lateral line organ now the next uh, thing that in case of the chondritis they're going to have cloaca right what is the meaning of cloaca cloaca is the common opening for the release of urine for the release of gamete and for the release of excreta so cloaca release urine gamete and excreta with the help of the same opening called as cloaca but in case of osteitis they have a separate urinogenital opening this is the urinogenital opening and they have a separate anal opening also so in case of uh, osteitis separate urinogenital opening and anal opening is present in case of chondrectus with the same opening they will release urine also gamete also excreta also so what is that that is known as cloaca right remember that that is known as the chondrectus that is present in case of chondrectus so these are about the differences i uh, hope you have understood the differences you just make a complete note on the word the, that differences you will uh, easily understand the differences also and the next thing i can give you some examples right otherwise if you see their uh, circulation is same they have the same two chambered heart they will have the same monocondylic skull all of these things will be same one thing i can tell you that their kidney is mesonephric right but if you see in case of chondrectus they are ureotelic ureotelic means they release urea urea is the waste product in case of chondrectus and in case of osteitis they release ammonia so that's why this organ organisms are a monotelic organism right so why they are ureotelic and why they are monotelic the difference is i can give you in the chapter excretory product and their elimination because uh, osmolarity matters the salt and water balance matters this organism live in the salt water so that's why they have to be ureotelic and in case of osteitis they are a monotelic because they have water that is fresh water right so all these things i will give you a uh, later but for now just remember chondrectus they are ureotelic and osteitis they are monotelic we have the term osmo confirmers osmo regulators all of these things we will see in detail whenever we will study the chapter excretory product and their elimination right otherwise if you see the cranial nerve they will have the tempers of cranial nerve all of these things they will be same common to each other now see some examples right some examples i can give you that is dogfish or scoliodon okay scoliodon is a fish chondrectus in case of them this is also known as dogfish right so in case of them what happen what type of characteristics is seen see in case of them ovoviviparous condition is seen ovoviviparous condition means Ovoviviparity, ovoviviparity, and oviparous, viviparous. What is that? 
if that organism give birth to the babies directly, that type of organisms are viviparous. Viviparous means those organisms who give birth to the new young ones directly, like in case of human, that is uh, viviparous. Those organisms who lay only the eggs, like the birds, these organisms, they are oviparous, who lay eggs. One condition is there that is ovoviviparous. That means they release the eggs only, but these eggs do not come outside the body, right? The eggs are present within the uh, organism, within the fish that is coleodon, and the egg hatches inside the female fish and the new young ones comes outside their body it seems like whenever you see, you see from outside that they uh, give birth the new young ones but actually it is not these are ovoviviparous that means the eggs they have been hatched inside the female body right so this organism actually there is a pouch present that is known as mermaid's pouch and in the mermaid's pouch they store the eggs and these eggs they hatch and new young ones comes outside okay so that is oviviparous condition otherwise lots of organisms of chondritis they are viviparous they give rise to directly the young ones but yes in case of osteictis these org organisms they are oviparous they lay only the eggs okay in the water they will be fertilized they will have external fertilization because male do not have any copulatory organ right next one the next organism is carcharodon so carcharodon is nothing but the shark okay and one thing also you need to know that scoliodon this is also known as indian shark okay remember then next one they will be torpedo okay this organism is known as electric fish they can release uh, electric current then uh, the next organism is pristis pristis trigon so lots of organisms are here so fish then uh, lots of organisms are here these organisms they are contractors next one in case of uh, osteictis i can give you some of the examples like anabas coal fish okay next one uh, that is katla katla is also rohu is another organism next one some of the other examples they are very much important that is See, in case of osteictis, we have one very important that is seahorse. Okay, seahorse is one very typical organism that is also known as hippocampus. Okay, so in case of hippocampus, what happened? This organism, they have a, uh, that means actually that last tail region, they can hold like this. Okay, so this organism, this organism look like this okay you have said seahorse this organism is generally benign but this is osteictis okay next one we will see exocetus okay this is known as flying fish next one uh, goldfish or golden fish okay next one fighting fish Fighting fish is also known as beta and flying fish, exocetus, this is known as flying fish because, because this organism can fly from the water at a distance of six, around six meter, they can fly, right? From the water with the help of the fin actually they can fly, that is exocetus. Next one goldfish, remember this is important. Next one flying fish, this is known as, uh, sorry, fighting fish, this is known as beta. You will get huge examples of chondritis and osteictis, okay? So you just see those characteristics, these are going to be very much important, okay? So that is all about the class of the superclass spices first cl class that is chondrictus that is uh, cartilaginous fish and the second class that is osteictus osteictus or the bony fishes hope you have understood this examples all of the examples i will provide you in example in the pdf format so that's all about thank you